Good morning. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Buy Now, Sell Now. I'm Alex Matthew. You're watching ET Now. Joining me to take you through the next one hour is Cheryl D'Souza. Well, let's uh, take a check on how the markets are faring. And if yesterday's up move uh, gave some of you uh, smiles on your faces, well, it's proved to be just about a breather. And we're back to that bout of consolidation that we've seen over the past several sessions. And this isn't something that is happening just in India. I must point that out. It's a global phenomenon. It's a risk of sentiment that's very clearly visible in the sale of equities globally in uh, the uh, trend of buying of treasuries. You, you saw the, the yield on the 10-year benchmark in uh, the US come off just a bit and also the dollar has strengthened. So uh, apart from that, you also have crude oil prices that have crashed both yesterday and they're also trading a bit weak uh, today. So Brent trading just above that $60 mark. It's a sharp fall. All of that indicative of a risk of sentiment and what is playing spoil sport at this moment is a resurgence in COVID-19 cases. Perhaps vaccination drives globally not going as they were anticipated. But the good news is that in India, based on yesterday's announcement, you can expect that the vaccination drive will gather pace, will gather momentum. Starting from the 1st of April, of course, it's going to be extended to people, all people beyond the age of 45. So you can hope that the cases will actually come down over the course of the next couple of weeks, but it does bear watching. Let's take a look at the headline numbers then. Uh, the benchmarks uh, trading with cuts of over a percent, in fact, closer to 1.5 percent and not really good in terms of the breadth of the Nifty 50. You have only a handful of gainers. The broader markets are actually keeping pace with the Nifty 50 today. In fact, you're seeing quite a lot of selling in the broader markets as well. So the market breadth for the broader markets looking uh, at just a tad bit weak as of now. More than two losers for every stock that has gained. All right. Now, uh, let's also take a look at some of the sectors that are uh, in focus. Of course, you have the banking sector that gained quite sharply in yesterday's session, but now it's doing quite a week. In fact, it's down about 2%. The only sector that was gaining and that's perhaps just a tad bit in the green as of now is the pharma sector and that ties in to the overall theme of defensives that we have seen. All right. Now, uh, let's uh, also bring you um, a special program uh, uh, alert here. Times Network's India Economic Conclave is all set to bring you uh, the architects of India's future who will shape the golden decade for our nation building. You will witness a stellar lineup of policy makers, change makers, as well as growth agents, disruptors, and global thinkers. Abba Bakaya is here sharing a glimpse of the stalwarts like Rakesh Junjumala and Madhusunan Kela uh, that are going, going to be present at the IEC this year. Hope you're glued to your TV screens uh, this Thursday and Friday as uh, we all head to the India Economic Conclave, one of our flagship events and it's uh, star-studded as always uh, with leaders and stalwarts across the industry joining us. One of the highlights, of course, our masterclass with Rakesh Junjunwala, uh, the big bull and Madhukela market veteran. Both of these um, leaders when it comes to the Indian stock markets are going to be sharing their insights their learnings, uh, their uh, strategies over the years in a mega market masterclass with none other than our managing editor, Nikunj Dalmia. It's a conversation you just don't want to miss. You know, it's, it's rare to have them together and on a platform like this uh, where they'll be able to uh, share some of their uh, uh, learnings as well as uh, possibilities for India over the next decade, how they see things shaping up, what are the kind of opportunities they find, how bullish they continue to be on the growth story and what they really foresee as India's decade. Remember RJ, and we just spoke to him a few weeks ago, has been constantly reinforcing that this is going to be India's decade. So don't miss this. It's a market class, master class, a mega market master class. Uh, specially lined up at the India Economic Conclave. Stay tuned, this is going to be one blockbuster. All right, that is uh, Abha outlining of uh, outlining uh, the big guests that are, uh, that are expected at the India Economic Conclave, March 25th and 26th. 
uh, you cannot afford to miss this big event. All right, let's take a look at which are the stocks that we, uh, that we are tracking today on Buy Now, Sell Now in the stock cloud for the day. First up, I'll talk about Hero Moto Corp. Uh, we saw Maruti Suzuki go ahead with a price hike from April 1st. And Hero Moto Corp uh, is also going to increase uh, ex showroom prices of his motorcycles as well as scooters starting April due to increased commodity costs. Moving on, you have Rail Vikas uh, Nigam. Government uh, will be selling up to 15% shareholding in the company via offer for sale route starting today. Uh, the floor price for the OFS is set at 27.5 rupees per share, which is at a discount. Uh, Rosari Biotech is another company that is in focus today. Our company's board has approved preferential share allotment of 3.01 million equity shares at 996 rupees per share, aggregating to 300 crore rupees. Which are the other stocks that will focus? You also have Vascon Engineers. Our company has emerged lowest bidders for two projects in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Public Works Department. And on back of that, this particular stock is Abaz. Adani Transmission, another company that is in focus, Adani Electrical Electricity uh, Mumbai Infra, a subsidiary, has received a 25-year license from the Maharashtra Electricity Regulator Commission for an additional 1,000 megawatt transmission lines between uh, Kudus, uh, Palgar and Arik Colony. Wheels India is another stock that is in focus. Promoters, uh, promoter India Motor Parts and Accessories has bought uh, 5.8 lakh shares or 2.4% stake in the company from Royal Sundaram General Insurance Company. This is via a block deal. You have Adani Green that is in uh, focus uh, today uh, as well as along with Adani Green. You have Sterling and Wilson also that is in focus. Adani Green Energy has said that it has agreed to acquire two solar special uh, purpose vehicles of uh, Sterling and Wilson, the, uh, the 74.94 uh, megawatt SPV projects have an enterprise valuation of 446 crore rupees. Apart from that, you have oil companies as well as aviation companies. So, Interglobe uh, Aviation, SpiceJet are in focus today. This is on back of a spike in uh, COVID-19 cases. Also, the international uh, flights have been uh, continued to remain suspended. And also, uh, you, the uh, aviation companies and oil uh, marketing companies, as well as oil companies, are in focus due to a sharp decline coming in in the crude prices. And lastly, Intellect Design, Vanguard Funds Public has bought 7.2 lakh shares of uh, the company at 670 rupees per share via block deal uh, yesterday. So on back of that, that particular company is also in focus. So these are the companies that are in focus today and are part of the stock cloud of the day. All right, and those are the stocks that are in focus, like I mentioned. Uh, let's get on board our guests for today. We have Pinal Botra as well as Gorang Shah joining us this morning. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for standing by. Kunal, I'll come first to you. Uh, definitely a weak day for the markets uh, today after, uh, after what we saw yesterday. A uh, sharp cut coming in for the markets. Uh, what are your high-risk and low-risk ideas for our viewers, though? So, uh, good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, the market texture has remained a bit more uh, you know, volatile in the last few days. Uh, today is no exception. I think one of the reasons why I believe that uh, you know today's selling has probably been uh, or gotten more aggravated is uh, not just from the Asian markets queues or the global market queues, of course, but more to do with the market internals. There was a lot of put writers, uh, you know, which managed to write aggressively. Uh, you know, yesterday you saw 14,700, 14,800 strikes, which are almost at the money, uh, you know, strikes on the puts. These were the strikes which saw a huge amount of writing. So today when the markets opened on a gap down mode and it sustained for at least half an hour or so, the put writers went into a more of a, you know, uh, a covering kind of a mode and which is why you've seen an aggravated sell off on the index and breaking that 14,700 support as well. So I think it was it was more to do with, uh, to do with the uh, option writing adjustment which was uh, you know seen so let's hope that the second half is more stable uh, you know once the uh, you know put writing and the uh, you know phenomena gets uh, you know over and done with now i would expect uh, you know a couple of stocks to try and pick up pace if the market gets into more of a stable mode in the second half so two buy calls first one which i'm suggesting is about united spirits now both united spirits as well as you know ubl have seen a good pickup in the last 3 4 days uh, you, you, you know united spirits uh, from 525 530 levels 
has steadily moved up to 550 555 zone it's trying to come back uh, you know uh, uh, after a, a severe downtrend i think it started off in jan 2021 so i think from there on it started off uh, you know quite well so i'm expecting some uh, you know steady follow through price action in the stock uh, buy with a target of 600 stoppers could be kept at 530 the second stock which i have been bullish upon uh, of late has been fortis healthcare uh, you know the stock has given a big breakout in fact i done even a chart buster segment on fortis healthcare as well uh last week and you know the stock is clearly showing signs of a longer term breakout at current level so i think it's an interesting stock uh, you know from a near term uh, as well uh, on the on the back of strong momentum so buy on fortis healthcare maintaining those uh, you know near term targets of 225 so traders could look at a buy even at current levels and stop loss could be placed at approximately 207 zone All right, Kunal. Thanks so much for that. Uh, clearly, technical factors in focus today on the penultimate day of the ongoing series. Let's go across to Goran Shah now. Uh, good morning, Goran. Thanks so much for tuning, uh, for joining in rather. Uh, what are your high risk and low risk ideas for today? Thank you, Alex, and morning to all of you. Also, I think uh, markets have been choppy for the last two to three weeks, and uh, if you have to just reflect upon the bottom that was made by Nifty Spot. over the last maybe about 2 or 3 weeks is lies somewhere close to about 14500 uh not to forget you have fna expiry as well uh our sense is that uh, 14500 should hold out uh, for uh, as far as the bottom is concerned alex and uh, corrections uh, we always believe at jujit are great opportunities to buy into strong stocks fundamentally sound stocks and this gives you an opportunity to the investors to you know get into the market in case if they have missed out uh, so with that perspective on the fundamental side we have two investment ideas first one is from a mid cap private sector bank uh, not not really spoken about uh, that is city union bank you don't really talk about this bank a lot but uh, the earnings for the third quarter was strong and uh, equally strong was the momentum from the management for the growth going forward uh, i think the stock is trading somewhere close to about 150 odd levels from a long term point of view 210 is the target so there is lot to be made over here in terms of returns uh, the second one is from the you know lot of talk has been there for public sector uh, companies government owned companies and this one is very closely associated with uh, defense as well uh, huge order book and uh, every quarter they go on adding new order to its order book and not only does the, does this company have strong order book but they have got equally strong capacity in terms of executing that order book because it is very important alex uh, to execute the order to translate into earnings so bl is the stock i think it is trading somewhere close to about 130 odd levels correct me if i am wrong uh, medium to long term target stands at 145 and just a disclaimer in case if the earnings are better for bel over a longer period of time we might revise our targets upwards as well absolutely well interesting picks gentlemen uh, by the both of you uh, do stay with us though we'll come back to you we're going to address viewer queries after this break Welcome back you're watching buy now sell now on ET now and now it's time to take the viewer queries and let's get on board our first viewer query and this is from Abdul Kadir he's saying that he's holding Shilpa Medicare at 550 rupees per share he wants to know what's the outlook of the stock so Abdul uh, has not shared the quantum of uh, the shares that he's holding the amount of shares uh, that he's holding of Shilpa Medicare but he shared with us the buying price which is 550 rupees per share uh, Kunal, I'll come first to you. Shilpa Medicare definitely has fallen sharply from those uh, buying levels of 550 rupees per share. If you see last one month, also the stock has fallen about 8 percent. What's the outlook looking like? Well, how, what are the charts indicating for Shilpa Medicare going ahead? Oh uh, yes, Sheryl, as you rightly said, that the stock has seen some selling pressure last six months. It's fallen off from uh, you know 650, 600 levels to. a 300 350 you know range where it's currently trading so yes the near term trends have been uh, you know impacted on the the stock prices and which is why i believe that it's possible that the stock may remain a bit more sideways uh, but uh, you know what happens is when you see a stock gradually uh, you know uh, continuing to move lower uh, you know inherently many of these indicators they come back into an oversold territory uh, you know for shilpa medicare 
I believe it's possible that if the stock breaks below that 300 mark, you could see the stock uh, entering into oversold territory. So that could be a good level for uh, you know you to average uh, at those levels. I think sub 300 levels could be a good level where you can look to average and try to bring your cost price lower because uh, you know whenever there is a mean reversion rally or even if there is a rally from the oversold territories, the rally could probably take the stock back towards 400, 450 kind of a zone. So I would advise an average on Shilpa Medicare uh, if the stock comes back below that 300 mark, which could also indicate that it's an oversold uh, correction into the stock price. All right, so that's what the technicals are indicating. Gaurang, coming to you on the fundamentals, that uh, uh, observation uh, and the warning letter on their formulations business uh, and the resultant uh, uh, decline of their earnings in the third quarter uh, is, is a major overhang. The fact that that uh, warning letter isn't going anywhere, it will likely take a while to resolve. Is that something that is concerning you or do you think that uh, this is an opportunity for the investor to really uh, average his cost and stay in for the long haul? First of all, uh, on, the, on one side, when you have pharma hogging the limelight, you have a stock like Shilpa Medicare, which is uh, under pressure because of these observations, as you rightly pointed out. And other than the overhang of such negative observations, I think, uh, according to what my understanding is, the management should have the capability and capacity to resolve all the negative observations as soon as possible, because as unless and until they do that, I'm talking about any pharma company. Uh, the business outlook comes under uncertainty and uncertainty is something that no investor would like and market doesn't like it either. Uh, if as Kunal is saying that the stock has been under pressure on the technical chart and there is a possibility that there is any recovery. So if there is any recovery, first of all, we don't have any coverage on Shilpa Medicare, but uh, this is my observation that I'm talking about. If there is any recovery, as Kunal mentioned on the technical chart, then my advice would be to use those rallies on the higher side to minimize your losses and move into DV's lab. And if you actually go to see, DV's lab has been a stellar performer, uh, not only for the last uh, short, for only not only for the short term, but even from a longer period of time. And this is also one of the companies which was under pressure because of certain observations, uh, negative EIRs, form 483, etc. But they have, they have the capacity to, to resolve those issues and come back with equal force and perform better. So use higher levels to switch to DV's laboratories would be my advice. All right, uh, Gorang, very pertinent point being made there. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us, as well as uh, Kunal. Thank you so much for taking the time, gentlemen. That's uh, 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 <laughs> well, we're heading into a short break right now, and uh, on the other side, we'll get you a lot more. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. And it's been raining IPOs in the past couple of weeks on the last street. And we're bringing you a conversation with the company that's made a stock market debut today. Anupam Rasai and raised 760 crore rupees through a fresh issue, which was oversubscribed by quite a large margin. But it hasn't had the best listing, though, down about 6% at the start. So to talk more on the company, uh, um, what are the prospects going ahead? We are joined by uh, Dr. Kiran Patel, uh, Patel, uh, Patel, uh, Patel, I beg your pardon, Dr. Kiran Patel, uh, who is the chairman and the promoter, and Mr. Afzal Malkani, who is the CFO of Anupam Rasain. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us on uh, Bayana Salon ET Now. Congratulations on the listing. Uh, please explain to us how will you use, use the proceeds going forward that you've raised uh, via the IPO? I think this is a birth of a baby. And of course, the initial few months will be little tumulus in the sense that for us to prove to the investor community that the dreams and vision we have are going to be fulfilled. If you ask me at a personal level, 
I am telling the management team that simply focus on quality and not on Wall Street or Bombay Stock Exchange. That's not our purpose. Our purpose is to deliver a wonderful company that has a vision of being a global company. And most importantly, take the opportunity of the current political situation whereby an alternate source of material the world is really looking for. And we are the perfect fit for it, especially in the chemical industry, because we are a very innovative company and doing things that are very, very different from most players. So in that sense, this is a God-given opportunity to us to ensure that we will be global players. All right, fair point. Uh, I, I do understand that since this is a fresh issue, a large portion is going to be used to pay off debt. Uh, Mr. Malkani, can you take us through what the debt levels were pre and what they will look like post the IPO? And also, how much stake do the promoters continue to hold in the company? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, your first question was about the object of the issue. Second was the how about the post listing and third is the post, uh, pre and post uh, shareholding pattern. Now, first about the object of the issue. The object of the issue is uh, something different in our case as there is no offer of for sale in our case. And out of the proceeds of total 760 crores, we are going to utilize 563 crores uh, for the repayment of a high cost debt for which we are paying 50 crore rupees per annum interest cost, which directly add into the profitability of the company. And remaining 200 crore rupees, we are going to utilize, this is for the general corporate purpose, which we intend to utilize for the, either for the acquisition or for the cost reduction measures in the area of environment, logistic, as well as the other element of the cost. Now, second question about the pre and post. Pre-issue pre shareholding pattern was about 76% with the promoters, Dr. Kiran Patel and Mr. Anand Desai, and 24% by the financial investor, Mr. Milan Thakkar. And now post in this, in this issue, we diluted about 14%. So this promoter stake reduced to 65% and 35% with the private investors, which includes 20% by Mr. Milan Thakkar. Uh, Dr. Patel, as well as Mr. Malkani, this is a question for both of you. Who are the key customers and what's the contracts with them? Also, it would be great if you could talk uh, to us about your order book as well as pricing power within the space as we are seeing actually raw material prices inching a bit higher now. Of course, this is best answered by Abzal, but I'll start off and then pass. we will be able to recover that in the following year. So strategically, what we have been able to do is lock in our price, both for the buyer and ourselves. And ourselves are protected by us holding a six month stock or inventory with us at a price that we had agreed upon and have the other flexibility of 90 days of supply from our supplier. So if you think about it, we are very well protected. And in the scenario where the price suddenly skyrockets, we will not be impacted in a negative manner. And you could see during the COVID time, we remain fully productive 
and have been able to deliver a 45% year-over-year growth in the past nine months, if you look at the 12 months from this time. So we are very much in a position of growth, responsible growth and profitable growth. So if we talk about specifically about our customers, then the Syngenta, Sumitomo, Adama, UPL and some other European customers for which we are not at liberty to disclose their name. But we can say that the 72% of the total world agrochemical market is captured by six uh, industry leaders. And out of the six industry leaders, four are our major customers. In that you can say, uh, you can understand our customer diversity. Uh, Mr. Malkani, uh, between the two key verticals, that is life science and specialty chemicals, could you take us through the revenue breakup? Yeah, if we see the bifurcation of the revenue, then so first of all, if we talk about the export and domestic, then out of our total revenue, about 65% revenue comes from export to Europe, USA, Japan, Singapore and other European countries. If we talk about the verticals, then our, about 90% revenue comes from the life science specialty chemicals and 10% revenue from the other than life science specialty chemicals. If we again bifurcate this life science related specialty chemicals of 90%, then out of this 90%, 70% comes from agrochemical, about 13% from personal care, about 7% from pharma and 10% from specialty pigments, dyes and polymer additives. And this uh, proportion is expected to continue Dr. Patel, uh, what is the impact uh, from uh, the China issues? Any benefits accrued in terms of pricing for the company? Literally, we were focused on growth. And as you know, I had invested approximately 800 crores over a period of time. And this was pre transformation of the economic dynamics in the global situation. So first, our vision was already there to be a major competition to China in particular, but being an alternate source for everybody. Lucky for us that China had seen the fallacy of their policy of capital to build the infrastructure and be ready and now with the opportunities coming in we are poised to really get a growth trajectory that many people have not expected. Dr. Patel, Mr. Malkani, thank you so much for taking the time. Wish you all the best going forward. Let's uh, switch gears now. Let's pivot and talk about uh, Welcan Energy. Uh, India has filed, this is what we've learned, India has filed an appeal against the Cairn Energy $1.4 billion arbitration award. And this is the second high profile uh, case after Vodafone idea, of course, uh, that has uh, been appealed by India uh, against uh, after losing uh, the tax case uh, at the permanent court of justice. Ruchi Bhatia is joining in uh, with more details. Ruchi. It's a 
scientific development coming in, uh, we are given to understand that India has finally appealed against uh, the Kane Energy International Arbitration verdict at The Hague. And this is with regard to India challenging the $1.4 billion arbitration award that was given by the Permanent Court of Justice. India has challenged uh, the verdict on grounds of it challenging India's right to uh, sovereignty, right to taxation and uh, also tax avoidance by Kane Energy in various jurisdictions it operated in. This is the second high profile case coming in after Vodafone that India had lost with respect to a tax tussle and uh, the Permanent Court of Justice had given the award in both the cases in favour of the respective companies. Uh, we're given to understand that New Delhi besides seeking a stay uh, uh, on uh, this uh, uh, on the enforcement of uh, this uh, verdict will also contest the enforcement in at least eight other jurisdictions as well, including US, UK, Canada, as well as France. As VATT now had reported, India was finally uh, finalizing its grounds for appeal. In fact, uh, they have said that uh, the arbitration award uh, questions India's uh, sovereign right to taxation and private individuals cannot decide on that. It also said that the issue falls outside the domain of uh, the bilateral investment treaty and beyond the jurisdiction of the international arbitration as well. India is also likely to have invoked the international public policy arguing that Kane did not pay any tax under any of the jurisdiction across the globe. Having said that, this is an important case. We TT now are given to understand that uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had also indicated that despite Kane uh, putting in a lot of pressure, in fact, I remember Simon Thomas, Kane Energy CEO, had even met top finance ministry officials, but looks like all those uh, uh, conversations have fallen flat and India has appealed against the Permanent Court of Justice's order. Ruchi, for giving us the latest on that particular uh, development, uh, we'll be closely tracking what uh, what happens next in this particular case. All right, uh, on that note, we'll slip into a break in this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now, but stay tuned, more on the other side, don't go anywhere.